Now, in today's Keeping It Green, this weekend might be a great time to get outside and work in your garden. That sounds nice. From perennials to pruning, ABC 7 meteorologist Mike Kaplan joining us live now. One of the most beautiful gardens in our area. It's the Chicago Botanic Garden. Hi, Mike. Hi. Look at this, the uh, the 407 just went by overhead. I'm actually here in the model railroad garden. This part of the garden is technically California, Yosemite over here, you got Telegraph Hill and San Fran. But we're not talking about California, we're talking about Chicago area gardening. And Heather Sherwood joins us to talk right now about one of the great plants that's in bloom in many people's yards right now, this gorgeous forsythia. What kind of things can we do to make sure it looks its best? Well, you wanna make sure you do pruning on it just after it flowers. And we have this beautiful one to show you what it actually looks like. and then this one that just has gone out of flower and you really want to do a rejuvenation prune on them keep it nice and open and it will intensify the flowers a little bit more and if you do it in february or something so you can bring in the branches for cut flowers and i can demonstrate for please you. do and, and as you're getting ready to do that i say some people are afraid to cut them because they think oh no i won't have as many flowers next year that's not true no, this actually increases your flower power by opening it up and letting the sun penetrate into the flower and into the bush itself, creating more flowers over time. All right, so which would you cut out of this one? You always want to look for anything crossing and things um, that are diseased or decayed at all. Because this is in a container, there's not too much di disease or decay, mm -hmm. but you can see this gnarly big group in here. Things that are bigger than your thumb in diameter There's is usually amount. what I take out first things going into All right, the I'll let you start chopping. I'm going to show some uh, weather graphics here as she takes away some of the material that will make room for new growth next year. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of cloud cover here today and the satellite picture is showing that increase in clouds, but so far the rain has held off. A couple of sprinkles here or there. Temperatures not bad, still cooler than normal for this time of year. 59 at O'Hare. It's even warmer up in Milwaukee there at 62. We should be a few degrees warmer tomorrow. But we've got 70s and even 80s on the way, Heather. How does that make you feel? I knew you'd be happy about that. We'll give you the full forecast in a few minutes. And uh, nice job of even just clearing out the front of this forsythia here. A little bit, we're going to talk about some flowering trees that you may want to add to your landscape, Definitely. including one of my favorites, the red bud. That'll be in just a few minutes. Alan, Linda, back to you. Yeah, I got some red buds on my, uh, on my uh, lot. And uh, they're just about ready to go, Mike. It's almost that time. Looks yeah. beautiful. Yep. All right, we'll see in just okay. a bit. We're going to be getting some tips about perennials and pruning a shrub, small trees in today's Keeping It Green. ABC 7 meteorologist Mike Kaplan joining us live from the Chicago Botanic Garden in Glencoe. Hi, Mike. Hi. Hey there, Alan Linda. And uh, we were just talking about apparently one of your favorite plants too, Alan, the Circus canadensis, the American redbud tree, which right about now is just starting to open up. And you're saying it's one of the sure signs that spring is coming, Heather. Oh, definitely. As soon as this guy uh, opens up, it's just like, oh, spring is sprung. Yay. <laughs> and a lot of people, I think, mistake this tree for a, a crab apple, and it's different. Yeah, it's very different. It flowers without any leaves on it. So you get the full power of all the blooms, and it's just about to bloom. You, you're talking 70 degrees next week. This will be in full flower. I love this tree for the city because it's an understory. It never gets really big. Um, 15 feet at the maximum. It has beautiful heart-shaped leaves, a nice yellow color in the fall, and it doesn't have any pests or diseases that are really rambunctious in the Chicago area for, for other trees, potentially. We're showing some fine examples of what you've got here now. The next tree that we're showing on tape is the viburnum. What variety is this? This one is Carli uh, Carlii and uh, snowball bush, it's called, and it is just about to open again. You, mm -hmm. Usually they'd be in full flower right now, <laughs> and it's got a fabulous scent to it. Again, it's a smaller tree, and most viburnums are ideal for the Chicago land area. They can take a lot of shade. They can take a lot of sun. Um, you can Fragrance? Very, this one is very fragrant, um, and it's wonderful. It's a three-season bush, so it'll keep leaves almost till Thanksgiving, and then it'll drop them for the full winter time. And as you can see, it's almost leafed out right now. Um, and I love it for the entryway of a house to give you a good scent power in there. And there are many different varieties of viburnum to choose from, like you said. There's probably 37 different varieties <laughs> just for the Chicago land area alone. All right, and then one of the perennials that is blooming now... Look at this. These are the bluebells. Yeah, Virginia uh, bluebells or Mertensia virginiana is one of my favorite spring ones. They are in full flower right now. It's a bicolor flower, bluish tinged Ooh. leaves on them. And honestly, this flower will go away and you won't even see it uh, come July 4th when we really heat up. So it's a great plant to put in combination with something that comes on later in the season. Yeah. Um, 
Well, yeah. I, and, and I love getting a little bit of blue in the garden, too. That's so nice to have that. So Virginia bluebells. Yes. Excellent. All right, let's talk about a lot of people had the blues <laughs> with the cold weather of late. Today, we at least made it into the 60s. Right now out at O'Hare, it's 59 degrees. Strong southwest winds, though, are pushing those 60-degree-ish temperatures right up to the lakeshore today. We're seeing some gusts better than 20 miles per hour. Highs, that I mentioned, did make it across the 60-degree threshold today. Uh, low temperatures not as cold in most areas this morning. There you see the record for this day. Now on radar, we had a couple sprinkles here or there, but most of the activity is still well out to the west of Chicago. I think it's going to be a few hours away from coming in here. We run you through our microcast future radar and you can see there will be at least a few periods when we get some heavier shower, maybe even a clap or two of thunder in here, especially tonight. Then we go through most of the day tomorrow dry. And as we move to Saturday morning, late Friday night, Saturday morning, could be another round of showers coming through here. That's kind of a new addition to the forecast. We had some showers in for Saturday. We may actually get two rounds of showers here on Saturday. Uh, show you the zoomed out picture here now as we uh, show you the satellite and radar composite. The storm system just getting organized out to the west. There is a frontal system associated with that. That will be swinging through here. But that air came from the Pacific, so it will not be a big cool down behind that front. In fact, temperatures tomorrow behind our little weak frontal system today will be a few degrees warmer. We're going to go for upper 60s here, and I think with a little bit of sunshine, we'll be able to get there. A couple of you might get up to 70 even. For tonight, going to say mainly cloudy, a round of showers, possible thunderstorms, nothing too heavy, though. Don't worry about severe weather. doesn't look likely at all tonight. Low temperatures will get down in the mid-40s with a wind shift. Tomorrow, not bad. Partly sunny skies, temperatures in the upper 60s with a northwest wind. Next seven days, about every other day, we've got that shower or thunderstorm thread in there. But temperatures definitely trending upward. As Heather was saying, we're going to have 70s, even an 80 coming in here. So these red buds are just going to be screaming with color, right? Oh, definitely. Everything's going to really pop. Tulips, daffodils, everything. They will love it here next week, as will you. Back to you guys. And uh, coming up at 445, we'll talk about some other bulbs, some of her favorites in just a few minutes. Back to you. Looks gorgeous, doesn't yeah, it? Sure does. All thanks, right, Mike. thanks very much. Let's get the latest now on our weather forecast. We'll check in again with Mike Kaplan. He's at the Chicago Botanic Garden. Hi, Mike. And I am not in the back of that white vehicle parked out there back of the uh, the old Channel 7 studio. No, this is part of the model railroad garden here. 5,000 plants, 17 different trains running through here. We're actually getting a preview today. This doesn't open to the public until Saturday, but this is just one of the great places to visit here at the Chicago Botanic Garden. And besides the trains, great plants and bulbs are really getting going now. Heather Sherwood's here to talk about a few of her favorites and why you like them so much. I got... I have daffodils to show you, hyacinths, and one little fritillaria. Hold that fritillaria up there. I'm going to see if Jose can get in it. Take a look. That's plaid. Yeah, this is uh, Fritillaria malarius. It's one of my favorite bulbs. No animals eat it, and it's one of the few plaid plants out there that we have. Uh, and does very well in Chicago land. Blooms this type of year. Okay, and then over here, the sweet-smelling hyacinth, another blue one that we love. Yeah, this is Delph Blue. I love this. Again, a, actually, it's a great naturalizing plant, so it'll rebloom uh, constantly in the garden every year. The scent of these things is to die for. Uh, wish, yeah, yeah, I wish you had smell-o-vision here. All right, and you got a couple different varieties of the uh, daffodils here, and the great thing about these, deer will not eat them. Deer won't eat them. Any other critters won't eat them. This first one I have is manly for you. <laughs> um, it's an open Corolla, so there's no cup, if you will, for mm -hmm. the cup and saucer. It's about 18 inches tall. And then my next favorite one is Thalia, um, Narcissus Thalia. It's an up-facing, double-flowering uh, white. Very, It's hard to get white, but this is a great one, and I love it. And my right, last What about one, this nice yellow one, also up-facing? Up-facing, and this is pistachio. And it's got a slightly whiter center in there and great for cut flowers and great for Mother's Day, which is this weekend. Yes, it is. So maybe uh, take mom out here to the garden or get her some beautiful flowers just like those. She'll be very, very happy. And I think moms are going to be happy. And you? Yes. <laughs> you're going to be happy with the weather. It's warming up. Let's look at the seven-day forecast. We get a couple showers here tonight. Tomorrow dry during the day, upper 60s. Showers tomorrow night into Saturday and again Saturday night. But we do move our temperatures up into the 70s. And, yes, we've put an 80 back on the board for the middle part of next week. And it looks like we're going to be seeing a fairly mild pattern here for the next uh, week or so. So gone with the 40s. You happy about that? Oh, wonderfully happy about <laughs> that. Everything's going to start blooming like crazy. It sure will. All right, Alan and Linda keeping it Green from the Chicago Botanic Garden. Hope you've enjoyed the tips we shared with you today. Mm -hmm. Very much. And we're very happy mm -hmm. about those temperatures. Yes, Mike, we are. Thanks very much. Yeah.